This is an educational tip brought to you by the Certified Horsemanship Association. I'm Ann Brzezicki, Director of Equestrian Programs here at Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And we have with us demonstrating today Ariel Heron on our American Quarter Horse, a Major League Star, and Riley Jordan on our American Quarter Horse, Hot Rodden in Chrome. We're going to talk to you today about how to measure your students' progress in learning collection and extension and shortening and lengthening your horse's strides. These are important skills in every discipline and almost every event, but sometimes it's difficult to measure your students' progress. We've set up a simple exercise today to allow instructors and students alike to be able to objectively measure the progress they make in adjusting their horse's strides. We're gonna measure out a 60 foot distance. It's not necessary that you have a tape measure for this as long as the distance is the same each time you set it up. I've set up two cones to indicate our starting line and I'm going to walk 20 strides at about three feet a stride to set up our finish line so that we have a consistent distance to measure the number of strides that our students and horses take. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, fifteen, twenty. So we'll make our finish line here. I'm going to ask Ariel to ride major through our measured distance at a walk. We're going to see how many strides major takes by counting the times that his left front foot hits the ground from the moment he crosses the starting line to the moment he crosses the finish line. Ten times Major's left front leg hit the ground in that distance and that gives us our baseline that we'll record to know that his normal walk would be about ten strides in that distance. So Ariel will shorten Major's stride this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, now we're going to ask her to go through and lengthen his stride. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So we have a difference of 13 and 9, which is a four stride difference at this time. Without applying any of the exercises to get uh, major collected and extended, just lengthening and shortening his stride produced um, a four stride distance. Riley, would you come through at a normal trot, please? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Harley hit the ground eight times with his left front leg in that measured distance. Riley, would you please trot Harley through in a short strided trot and then a long strided trot? So we see that Harley's stride is pretty short and he is not in a great frame, which is okay for shortening right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Harley got eleven strides in the measured distance and Riley's going to loosen her reins and ask Harley to lengthen his stride. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we also have a difference of four strides before we've done any work in lengthening and shortening. Ariel, would you come through 
at a moderate lope. That was eight. So we have a baseline for what's normal for these horses. Now we're going to apply some exercises and ask them to collect and extend. Lengthening and shortening is just about the length of the stride itself, which is also important to us in many cases, such as when you jump into a line of jumps and you have to move up or shorten your horse's stride to find the next spot. It also is effective in reining between our small slow circles and our large fast circles. But in addition to just the length of the horse's stride, we would like to encompass the entire horse. If we're going to ask him to shorten his stride and achieve collection, we need his hindquarters underneath him, his back up, his shoulders up, and his neck reaching forward into the rider's hand. So we know our riders can lengthen and shorten their strides. Now we're gonna see if they can't do this through the horse's entire body. So as we walk, we want the riders to be swinging their seats in the saddle. We're gonna ask the horses to lengthen first. And this is effectively done by connecting the horse from our inside leg to our outside rein with a pretty active inside leg that sends the horse outward and into the organizing influence of the outside rein. The horses should have a little bend in their body and the riders should be able to see the horse's inside eye. As the riders swing with their seats, we also want them to close their inside leg as the horse's inside hind leg comes forward and their outside leg as the horse's outside hind leg comes forward. We want the horses to reach up under their bodies with their hind legs and stretch over their top line and down into the rider's hand. Major's doing this pretty well right here. He's getting a bit of an overtrack with his hind leg. Harley, on the other hand, is being his usual lazy self. So Riley's gonna have to work a little harder with their inside leg especially. That's a girl, and keep swinging with your seat, asking him to find your outside rein, and then letting that out just a little. But keep him coming forward, Riley, because he is really being lazy. That a girl, much better. Let's go up to a posting trot, both of you, and continue to ask your horses to stretch into the outside rein. It's gonna be an active inside leg on the downbeat of the posting trot with a little bend to the inside and a solid but soft feel of the outside rein. Ask them to stretch their right side as well as their, there we go, looking good, girls. Keep sending him, Riley. He's giving you, yes, that's it. Good girl. Help him feel that outside rein and stretch down. When he finds it, you can let your hand stretch forward just a little bit and ask him to round up over his back. Very nice. All right, now we're gonna ask them to collect a little bit by shortening their inside side with your inside aids first and then capturing that bend with your outside aids and you can go to a sitting trot. And when they've shortened up a little, you can bend an additional amount to the inside with your active inside aids and then balance that with an additional outside outside aid application. Wonderful. Riley, you're gonna have to keep him active behind. Major's wanting to hide behind the bridle a little bit. Keep sending him forward into your hand. All right, and let's send them forward into a lengthened stride again. Horses do two things with their hind legs. They can carry themselves in collection or they can drive themselves forward. Most of the time we ask for a combination of those things. And so to stretch the envelope in both ways, collection and extension, helps our horses become more longitudinally flexible, stronger, and better balanced. You would both pick up the left lead 
and ask your horses to lengthen their stride for say 10, maybe 15 strides. Send them forward with lots of engagement from behind, lots of energy. Open the front door, really let them stretch. All right, now we're gonna shorten their inside side first and then balance it with, their, with your outside aids and start to ask them to collect. Often, the horses will tilt their heads where their outside ear is leaning to the outside and that is often a sign that the rider's outside aids are either not as strong as they need to be or that the horse isn't listening to them as well as they could. When that happens, we can apply a counter bend exercise where we'll, we'll keep the horse on the same lead. We'll ask the horses to bend the opposite way for a few strides, answering the rider's outside rein and hand and leg, and then go back to the true bend, which is the same as the direction they're traveling, and then they'll often answer the rider's outside aids a little better. All right, so let's stretch the horses out again. There we go. And then ask them to collect again with your inside bend and then capturing that bend with your outside aids. And both our girls are having to ride pretty hard to keep these horses coming forward into collection. Riley, get your right leg under his rib cage and think lift and lift and lift and lift that a girl. Wonderful. All right, you ladies can walk and rest. When horses are very advanced and riders are very advanced, it's easy for them to use all their aids at the same time. But as riders are learning to ride the whole horse and the horses are learning to do advanced exercises, it's often helpful if we break these things down into smaller pieces, like making an addition problem out of it instead of a calculus problem. We can do that lots of times by asking the horse to shape to the inside, starting with our inside leg at the girth, and then our inside hand, and then adding our outside rein and hand and leg and Major answered Ariel's outside aids beautifully there. He's actually performing a little bit of a half pass. He answered them so well. That addition problem of asking the horse to control one part of his body at a time can make very complicated exercises a lot easier for the horses and the riders to learn. So we're now going to compare the number of strides we've gotten after our collecting exercises to um, what we got the first time through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, we did not add an additional stride, but we did add some quality to this exercise. Now we'll ask him to lengthen his walk and stretch his neck and see if we can't take a stride out. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Major is rounder longitudinally, and the rhythm of the walk was a good bit more consistent than it was the first time. Riley, you're going to work the trot. We're going to ask him to shape a little bit more. Go to your outside rein. Be very active with your legs on the downbeat. More connection to your outside rein. Keep that inside leg going. Come on, both legs, squeeze him up. Ask him to work. Bad a girl. And then let your outside rein out just a little bit. Post bigger, good. Soften your reins, lengthen them a bit, good. Keep sending him forward into the slightly longer rein. 
That's a girl. Now we've got him working. You're sending him forward into your hand. Post big. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Harley did lengthen his stride. He is in a bit of a hurry. Put him on your outside rein again. Bigger, not faster. Get a little bend. Hold your right rein. Inside leg stays at the girth. That's it. Let your outside rein out just a little. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That was a much better quality trot. Okay, Riley, let's go for the collected trot. Keep asking him to step under behind a little bit more. And now your outside aids are going to ride him into your inside hand a little bit more energetically. Got him overdone in front. Go ahead and pick your hands up, Riley. Ask him to bring his neck up just a little bit. And then wrap him around your left leg with your right aids again. Go ahead. No, this is going to be too long. So make another circle. Yep, make it a small circle. Think of it almost like a turn on the haunches that your outside aids are going to push him in. And now you can go down the grid. Go ahead and circle one more time, and then you can go down the measured distance with your outside aids being actively riding him into your inside hand. Okay, now you got too much stride. <laughs> it's a balance, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let him lengthen, Riley. Let him stretch and rest his carrying muscles while he trots back on up here. And as you start riding into the corner, we're going to start collecting him again. Create your bend and capture your bend with your outside aids. Yes, capture them again. Make a small circle that you're gonna ride almost like a turn on the haunches with your outside aids riding him. Yeah, that a girl, all right. And keep that, keep that, keep it, keep it. Two, three, four, five, six, keep it again. Eight, nine, 10, 11, okay, good girl. All right, give Harley a pat. That a girl. All right, and what you have is a collected canner. It's not a lope, but it is a collected canner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 90 <laughs> percent. One more time. So your left leg is a post that your outside aids wrap your horse around. Very good. And this requires that you stay active with your leg. Major thinks this is a lot of work. Collection is a lot of work. Keep the rhythm. Outside legs, a lifting leg, leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So when we have riders of different disciplines in the arena at the same time, it's a good idea to ask the horses to go outside their usual box as we were asking Major to do a collected canner. Now we're going to let Major lope through the grid. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then Ariel, you're going to ask him to extend. And in extension, we want him to stay round. We don't want him to just hit the gas pedal and run like crazy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the quality of that canner was much better. The quality of his lope was better than his collected canner because he maintained his top line more correctly. With the Western horses, we like to think that we can stretch their envelope to be more collected and more extended, and of course the hunters as well. It is usually easier to collect the Western horses and extend the hunters but it's good for both types to um, stretch and carry themselves in different exercises. 
So I hope this has been helpful. It will give you an idea of um, not only an exercise you can use to measure the progress of your riders, but also a sample lesson. Thank you for visiting with us today.